Hello and welcome back for some more Mathlicious Maths. So here now we're going to talk about uh, scattered diagrams and it's actually going to cover some of the ideas you've already seen before. Okay, so then when we've got a graph and we've plotted the points like this, we're starting to now try and see if we can see relationships. So this one, we've already seen this type before. So as the X numbers are increasing, can you tell me what's happening to the Y numbers? Stop the video and write that down. Okay, so did you say as the X increases, the Y increases? And if you remember, this was the love graph, where the more time he spent uh, with the girl, the more he loved the girl. So what we call this, there's three different words sometimes you use. You sometimes say relationship. In the Tip Go Mass book that we're using, they use the word association. Uh, sometimes we use the term correlation, which is more high school. -y. But what we've got is a positive relationship or a positive association, or it's called a positive correlation, okay? Now, the second one, what happens as x increases here? Do you see what happens? Can you remember it from the earlier unit? The more she saw him, what happened to her love? Yeah, it decreased. So here, the y values are decreasing as the x is increases. As x increases, y decreases. As x increases here, y increases. What type of relationship is that? Well, I would say for him it's going to be a negative relationship. Or, as I said, the Go Mass book likes to use this word, association, so it has a negative association. Or the other term we use is correlation, which is more of a statistical term, so we could have a negative correlation. Now, here is a different type of love relationship where different times the love seems to be going up, down, up, down, up, down, all around. So X and Y have, there's no pattern to it. It is really random and all over the place. So in fact here, there we say there's no relationship, no association, and there's no correlation. Okay. Now sometimes when you're doing these graphs, there's a couple other things that might happen. So here... Uh, we're going to talk about clusters. I'm going to put the title as well, Outliers, because I realise I'm talking about that as well. Let me write that a bit better. It's out as in get out. Outliers. So a cluster is when you get a set of closely grouped data points, and they either form around a point or a location, or they can be also along a line. So here I did a little example. So as you can see, there's a group of points here. There's a group of points there. So they're grouping around a point or in an area together, and they do look quite separate. So these are what we call clusters. And then we'd want to know why we're getting clusters and what does it mean in the context of whatever we're measuring on the y and the x-axis, which is why it's important you label the x-axis with words and with the units so you can understand why this might be happening. The other one is when you have an outlier or something that's called a rogue value. So this is a point of data that is very different from all the other data points. So as you can see here, these points are sort of clustered. If we put a line in here, they're sort of clustered around a line. They're going in a linear direction slowly in this direction. But this one is certainly not in with this group of people. So this is what we call an outlier. And often I've heard it referred to as a rogue value as well. So you should have done activity two at this point as well, the explore activity two. So you did some about interpreting, um, uh, making interpretations about clusters, uh, cluster areas and outliers. So it, once you've written these down, I would suggest that you glue that page into your notebook as just a worked example for yourself. And that's all you need for this.